Our hope is uh, to plant seeds in the gospel. There are so many uh, episodes and stories and parables about planting seeds that start little and grow big. Well, my hope and prayer is to be open, open to the fullness of what the time is going to bring, no matter what it is. I eventually just got the feeling that I didn't want to sit in meetings anymore. I wanted to volunteer and hold the hand of a dying person, and I wanted to have a child in my lap, and I wanted to be in personal contact with the people who, I quote, I'm helping, but I really can't emphasize enough the growth and the learning that I get from it. I begin to feel sometimes I'm getting more out of this than I could possibly be giving to anybody else. The name of our organization at the parish is Hearts Open to the World, and that's named uh, for, in turn for an organization founded by Father Dominique Peer, who was a Dominican, member of the Order of Preachers, uh, and he was a moral theologian in Belgium, but he had a, a real concern for the refugees, uh, so many who were displaced after World War II and he won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1958 for his efforts. We are inspired by his motto, which is help for self-help. So Father Dominique Peer used to say, uh, you don't have to plant a whole orchard, just start with a single tree. So that's what our kind of idea is, to come over here and plant a few seeds of, of, of love, of solidarity, of service, of help, of financial aid, of expertise, whatever it may be. And from there, we, from that little love, we hope that uh, different um, trees and flowers and bushes that uh, will grow. special welcome to our guests who arrived from a parish in the United States. They'll be with us just for about a day. We have a busy schedule of visits here and in Kisumu and further in Yansa province. It's hard for me to talk right now because we've just finished Mass and I feel kind of choked up. It's such a moving experience to be here. I'm so impressed by these people. They're so gentle. I can't stop crying. It's, it's very emotional. Um, just the whole experience is emotional. I'm just planning to that maybe my presence here if I can absorb some of the gentleness of the people. Have you ever seen anybody with flatland who has set up an irrigation system here? They, they just use it manually, using the buckets. Yes, of course. Yeah. And from from a river or a stream somewhere. Yeah. To go and water the, 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 what they are planted in there. Yeah. In the, in the, in the, uh, Maybe we could get a grant yeah. to pay for a backhoe to come around to all the farmers in one village and right. dig a pit yeah. and uh, work out the, the catchment off the roof. Mm -hmm. Find a good source for the liners. Mm -hmm. 
That could be very interesting, I think. Mm. <coughs> this is our crops grow very fast. Yes. 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 So if we can get that, uh, the, if we can get the plants, then actually we can even feed other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It should increase your productivity a lot. Just, just as an illustration, what's what's in each bag has. This is corn. Okay. There's uh, beets. Do you know beets? Um, squash. All kinds of squash. Pumpkins, onions, lots of onions, zucchini, it's a kind of squash, the green squash. I understand completely if many of these things don't work. Yeah. D let's not worry about that, let's worry about what does work. So there you go, Bonifas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, you're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mary Kasiragi, mostly known as Maria, <laughs> and uh, my role is I'm the administrator of Father Tom's CAD, and um, I also act the financial coordinator to the primary and secondary school, Our Lady of Grace School. My office is like the mother to every child, so I am the mother, irrespective of my, <laughs> my, my size, I'm the mother of all the children. We make sure that we work together with both the primary and the secondary school in sustaining the children in whichever way, from emotional, physical, spiritual, with the other organs of the school or with the other department of the school for the smooth running of the children that we have and for them to get what actually the mission of Father Tom is, providing education to the children who will otherwise not add, ha, uh, have had it. And because of the criteria that we have, those are children who are coming from poor families, from death in their family, total orphans I mean, or abusive families. So I knew in my heart that I wanted to encourage other people. It doesn't matter where you come from, it is what is within you. My parents passed away in 2005. My dad was uh, beaten by the thugs and uh, after that he was taken in the hospital and it just took uh, a couple of months and then he passed away, which was very painful. My mother was uh, having stomach ulcer due, due to the stress of the of my father. Uh, after the death of my both parents, sometimes we can we could even uh, sleep without eating anything. As people start scrambling over our properties. Uh, our land was taken by the villagers. Uh, life was uh, really difficult. So I decided to be a street boy so that I can even eat uh, the leftovers which tourists has eaten in the hotel, yeah. There is where Father Martin Martini came to my home. He told us to pack our things. Told me if I can come to the program. And uh, by that time, I did not have any support from anybody. So I said, yes, let me just go with you. We really thank our sponsors for having given, um, given us that opportunity. As per now I can smile, I can even play, because uh, I'm in a very good organization. Okay, the, for the Tom's kids, are really giving us a good uh, education, uh, and so that we may be independent and uh, have a better future. If I had one thing to say that, that I've learned about these kids is what they need more than anything else is loyalty. A knowledge that we're not going to throw them away. And they constantly test to see if, if you are going to be loyal whereas everybody else in my life has left me. 
either through death or through betrayal. I'm often told, what's going to happen when you leave? Or what's going to happen if this whole thing falls apart? Well, then they will have known that one or two or three people have cared for them, have loved them. But Father Tom can touch them in such a way that they know they're loved. And they know that love is unselfish and that it's meant to bring them to Christ with the knowledge that their lives matter and that they can make a difference not only in their own lives but in the lives of those around them. I believe that at one point we all have wings and we can fly. So I, I believe in these children and I tell every donor that it is your time to also show them as much as you giving them today, if you're not there, they also can do it. And that's what we are doing. And that's what I'm committed to do, to show them you can make it. So there are so many needy young Kenyans who need education. They have the potential, but they lack the funds to take them to school. So my urge to the donors, if they can come in and support these young Kenyans who are yearning for education, I think it can be a greater transformation to Kenya. to St. Dennis uh, Kandidi School. Many of the kids there uh, are orphans from the AIDS crisis and uh, they uh, are funded by the government but also rely on much uh, um, charitable and private assistance. Our connection there is through uh, Professor Chuck Weira, whose grad student uh, Daniel Ochiel is from Kusuma, went to that school and who now supports that school. There is great need for school feeding program in the sense when you, you look around, that is the harvest, somebody's harvest for one year. Imagine what, what produce can you get from there? He has, a, he has a wife, three children, or even four children. 
unbelievable. And in most cases, these children, when they go, they go back home, in some homes, there is no food. Mm -hmm. How can it? <laughs> so there is a great need for us for a school feeding program. Mm -hmm. mm. And if you can get assistance, even external, we would appreciate. Because the future of this country depends on these children. You, you touch our hearts. Our hope is a special way to help build a, a cafeteria, uh, at least a kitchen, because the kids are sent home for lunch and so many of them are so poor that they uh, don't have any food at home. And so uh, it makes, not only are they hungry, but it makes learning very difficult, if not impossible. <laughs> In our facility, we are situated next to the two highways, actually. So we experience so many accidents. Whenever we get emergency services, we refer so many patients to Kisumu. It's around 40 to 50 kilometers from here. And many times, we get patients with head injury or chest injury. This one, we have to act very fast because at times we've lost patients while on transit to Kisumu. That's why we prefer that if we get, they get the services on the spot. Actually, they need where there is a theater. Then uh, like uh, in maternity, in case there is a complication, then they are taken to theater immediately so that you save the life of the baby and the life of the mother. We have one medical doctor. We have a total of 36 beds. If we can have like 120, because if we get an operating theater, it means we'll get more patients. So definitely, uh, we need more pets. And if we improve the services, definitely we'll get more patients. Our wards, like uh, the pediatric ward, that's the ward for children, you know, they, they, they are gadgets that actually we need like to prepare. So that whenever you get like an emergency case, you move very fast. No, it's very easy for you to lose a child. We 
with adults, our major problem is the HIV-related condition. That's when most of them are actually communicable. That can be transmitted from one person to another. Like tuberculosis, we have um, diarrhea-related conditions like pneumonia. Uh, we also experience malaria. There is also typhoid. There is also dysentery. There is cholera. We also have the non-communicable diseases like uh, diabetes, mellitus, the hypertension. So the list is endless. And in this region, people, they cannot afford. So it means that the hospital has to chip in to either subsidize or waive the remaining. Because the service has to be provided. So when you want to purchase more equipment, more items, it becomes a challenge for you. Because you gave the service, but you, they, they are not able to pay for that service. If our staffs can get to, 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 to maybe to your country, to, to maybe to learn new techniques, new ideas on how to manage some conditions, and maybe you are, your people can also come over to, to see exactly the conditions that we experience in this region. I think it will help us to motivate our people so that they know where the world is heading to. I miss him. I, I was I expected him to come. <laughs> okay. Good. 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 That's it. Good. That's good power. Thank you. Ah. Thank you. She's making it move. Thank you, my man. Good. Just like fly off. It was a pitch. It could. That's why you don't want to hold it straight up in the air. Bravo. Cameras are rolling. Hey, you got any bravo? How about an applause for Father? Huh? Well done. And so the altar will be here, the center place of worship for everybody. And then uh, when the priest uh, will be here, he faces the people. Everybody, and the, everybody will be seated there. And this is the place. So we are happy that we have donated some a symbol for Africa, a symbol for Saint for Katito to present Christ in Africa. Thank you very much. So we give thanks to God uh, for our ability to be with you here today. And we pray indeed for many blessings on you, uh, for all of your goodness and for your faith. Although we come from uh, different parts of the world, and although there, is a lot of, uh, there are a lot of differences between New Hampshire and uh, Katito and the surrounding areas, nonetheless we have, uh, during our time here, uh, discovered so much more our commonality. Our visit for ourselves has already much been manifested as a sign of the love of God. We find Him present here in so many miraculous ways, in so many powerful effects of His goodness and of His love. And we rejoice at His strength and His goodness shown through all of you. <laughs> It is wonderful to be here, and we thank you for the beautiful singing that we've heard today. You have a wonderful music program, and it's, uh, it makes the Mass very sacred. And we thank you for sharing that with us. <laughs>
you want to serve and to be with them and side by side with them creates a kind of human global connection that, that sending a check never does. I mean, sharing treasure, which is what that is, is really the first step. But I think sharing our time and our talents is, at least for me, what I, what I need to do. And I would just venture that we can learn as much from them and they can help us as much as we can ever help them. So, but that it can only happen when we're here and when our, our hearts are open to them.